Our study is entitled, The Thief is Not in Heaven. There are many who believe that the thief on the cross is already in heaven based on what Jesus told him. We will look at that in a moment. But we have seen in our presentation, Are the dead surely dead? that the dead, good and bad, return to the dust at death. It is only after the final judgment on the last day when Jesus returns, the rewards are given to all. The righteous go to heaven when Jesus comes a second time after a bodily resurrection and the wicked will face their punishment in hellfire after the millennium. For more details on the topic of hellfire, kindly watch my presentation, A Trip to Hell. Let's see what Jesus told the thief that Good Friday. Luke 23, 43. Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. When you read that passage, it looks like he went to paradise or heaven that same day, the same day he was dying on the cross. But there is a problem with the translation here, as we shall soon see. Before I could explain the problem in the text, let me give you an illustration. A story goes like this. A judge after the trial decided not to kill the accused as he found him not guilty of the crime. The judge declared, hang him not, leave him. The clerk in the court made a mistake in typing. He typed, hang him, not leave him. It's exactly the same words that the judge said, but he put the comma in the wrong place. A comma killed the man. You see what a misplaced comma can do to a sentence? Listen to how the Hebrew and Greek original scriptures were written. I quote, The oldest copies of both the Greek New Testament and the Hebrew Old Testament are written with no punctuation. In addition, the ancient Greeks used no spaces between words or paragraphs. Texts were a continuous string of letters. Unquote, Greek language and linguistic gateway. Punctuation was added around 500 years later after the New Testament was written. Also, all were written in the upper case in the first century. When Luke wrote that verse in the first century, he didn't put any comma. It was added around 500 years later by the copyist. Later, after 500 years, as the Greek language developed, uh, these punctuations were added to the New Testament Greek copies. So when the people put the punctuation in the Bible copies, they did a very good job in almost all places. In this passage of Luke, they put the comma after the word you, as you can see here. With the comma after the word you, it would mean that same day, that is on Good Friday, Jesus and the thief would be in paradise. Now let me put that verse again and put the comma after the word today. And now if you read that statement, it changes the meaning completely. Let's read it with the comma in a different place. Luke 23, 43, And Jesus said unto him, Assuredly, I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. What does that mean? It means Jesus just promised the thief that day, that Friday, that the thief would be with Jesus in paradise later. Now how to know for sure where the coma should actually be? The answer comes to us three days later when Jesus spoke to Mary Magdalene at the tomb. She was so happy to see the resurrected Lord that she immediately wanted to hold on to his feet. Jesus stopped her and said, 
John 20, 17, Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. On Sunday morning he said, I am not yet ascended to my Father. Beloved, if Jesus was not yet ascended to heaven on Sunday morning, how could he tell the thief on Friday, today you will be with me in paradise when Jesus himself did not go to paradise? Remember, he told the thief, you will be with me, which means Jesus should have been there and the thief also would be there. But the very fact Jesus told Mary on Sunday morning that he has not yet ascended to heaven clearly proves that the comma is misplaced by the translators there. There in that story, a misplaced comma killed the man. Here in the gospel story, a misplaced comma has supposedly made alive the thief and made him to be in heaven. You see how opposite meanings can be derived from a wrong comma placement? In fact, the thief knew when he would be going to heaven. Listen to his request. He said in Luke 23, 42, Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He said, when you come into your kingdom, Lord, remember me. He didn't say, Lord, when you go to your kingdom, when you go to heaven, please remember. He said, when you come, remember. Jesus' kingdom has still not come. We still pray in the Lord's prayer, thy kingdom come, don't we? The thief knew his theology well, brothers and sisters. He knew when people would go to heaven. But unfortunately, he lived a sinful life. But thank God, he met Jesus on the cross just before he died. And he repented and he was saved and will be in the kingdom when Jesus returns the second time. You know, some people think paradise is a place in hell. I want to quote what the encyclopedia says about people's belief on paradise. Quote, Paradise is often described as a higher place, the holiest place, in contrast to this world, or underworlds such as hell. Unquote. Yes, I believe paradise is a higher place, the holiest place. It's heaven. But there are many others who believe, as it says here, it's the underworld of hell hell. Think about this. Why would Jesus want to promise the thief a place in hell? Wouldn't that be sad and ridiculous and shocking? When he's saying, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom, Jesus says, listen, you'll be in hell, I'm telling you. Let's allow the Bible to tell us where and what is paradise. The word paradise appears only three times in the entire Bible, and it's all in the New Testament. Once in Luke, where Jesus told the thief he would be in paradise. We will look at the other two statements. Talking about his own experience and vision, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 12, 4, how that he was caught up into paradise. And so here we see paradise is up. And he clarifies where is paradise in verse 2. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. So paradise is up. It is the third heaven where God dwells. Revelation confirms it in chapter 2 verse 7. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Again you see paradise is associated with God. It is called the paradise of God. And the tree of life we know from Revelation 22, 1 and 2 is in front of God's throne. So paradise, beloved, is heaven where God is and Jesus Jesus promised a place to the repentant thief in paradise. And when would the thief go to paradise? When Jesus comes with his kingdom during his second coming. So the thief is not in heaven yet, but he will be there when Jesus comes. 
Thank God. Thank you and God bless. Amen.